Hey y'all, welcome to another nature journaling paint with me. First off, I wanted to apologize if there's a lot of background noise today. I swear the air conditioner has not stopped running. There are people sawing things outside. My dog is chewing a bone on the floor and then there's cicadas buzzing everywhere. So I'll try to get rid of the background noise, but I'm not sure if it's going to work. Anyway, today I am drawing a picture in my sketchbook, kind of a little nature journaling entry of a picture I took in my backyard. Um, this year I grew these Mexican sunflowers from seeds. Uh, I started them in pots and eventually moved them outside. There was a beautiful orange monarch sitting on top of a my little orange Mexican sunflower. So I took some photos and thought I would document it. I am sketching it out first. I love to use this brown. It's an erasable colored pencil and it's brown. I don't know why, but whenever I use this pencil, something magical happens and I feel like I can draw better. I don't understand it. Sketching everything out, just kind of blocking out the different colors, basically just blocking in shapes. So I decided to start off with the green leaves under the the flower, which I don't know if that was a great idea. I probably should have started with the petals first because the green is so dark and if you are not careful and you touch the two when they're even the slightest bit wet, it would run together. So be aware of that. Since I wanted to let the green dry before I started painting the orange petals, I decided to do the middle of the flower next. So I just got kind of like a mustardy yellow and I'm just putting down a base, the base color I guess. And a little rough edges and a little texture. I'm using my air gun to dry it up so I can go into the next step. So for the petals, I kind of mixed my orange with a little bit of red and I'm just putting in a base coat. I'm making it a little bit darker depending on, you know, what I see. Some places I let the paper color show through a little bit more and where there's where it's more vibrant then I'll just get more paint. The edges of the flowers also have a little tiny bit of yellow so I added some dabs of yellow on the tips. Adding a little bit more definition as a, a second coat. So I mixed a, just a teeny dab of the green with the orange to dull the color a little bit for the shadows. So I'm just paying attention to where I see some shadows and going around those edges a little bit. Anytime you want to desaturate a color slightly for a shadow, um, just add the complementary color, just a dab until you get the hue you want.
Okay, now I'm starting on the wings. I decided to do the bright, kind of like a rusty orange first. I just kind of locked in those areas earlier, so I'm just filling them in like a coloring book. And then on the bottom wing, there's that, it's the same color, only it's much lighter. So I'm just doing a wash over the whole bottom wing practically. So I'm going to let that dry for a minute and I'm adding some more bright yellow just for some more texture, a little layering here in the middle. And now I mixed up, it's like a brown with a touch of the yellow in it. Um, it's like a sepia brown, I guess. And I'm just adding some of the, some shadowing into the middle of the flower. And now also around some edges of the petals. Just going through and defining the edges a little bit. Now I'm adding another coat or another layer to the shadows in the middle. I decided the middle needed a little touch of the orange as well for some highlights. I'm just doing a little more defining with the sepia. So I have this super black ink brush. It's like a pre-filled brush. I decided to use that for the black of the butterfly because it just seemed like the the right intensity that I wanted. So I realized here that I forgot to block in a few spots and I needed that to see what I was doing first. But anyway, I took the, it's like a water brush pre-filled with ink and I'm just kind of coloring it in. I needed to try to make it not look so perfectly neat because if you look closely at the butterfly wings it's got this effect that's kind of like rigid and I don't know kind of like a colored pencil look so a little bit later I'm gonna add a little colored pencil to get that effect I always found that butterfly wings were really hard. They're so detailed. And on top of that, if you do a butterfly with both of its wings out, you have to get them exactly identical or symmetrical or whatever. And that's really hard to do. <laughs> so here's a little pro tip here. If you don't want to do that, just do it with its wings folded shut and then you won't have to worry about it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm using a Posca pen. It's like a fine tip acrylic marker to add the, the white dots. Um, honestly, I kind of regretted doing it this way. I probably should have put down the masking fluid for the white dots 
instead so that it was completely just the paper because I realized that this pen, even though it's opaque, when I put it over the black, the black kind of soaked into the white and made it gray. So I was like, oh, this isn't as bright as I wanted it to be. You'll see that I will put a couple layers of that on to try and get it as vibrant as I wanted it to be. But the better way to do it would definitely have been using masking fluid. going over it again to try to get it more opaque. So I decided that the pasta pen wasn't cutting it, so I grabbed some fluid acrylic and went over the spots with that. And I like that a lot better. I still say it would have been better to use the masking fluid on those spots and then rubbed it away after the, the black was applied, but oops, live and learn. Now giving it a good dry with the heat gun. And now I'm just going to add a few highlights to the the middle of the flower just because I thought it looked good. Now I'm taking a black colored pencil and going around the edges of all the, the sections inside of the butterfly just because I feel like that's the effect that they actually look like they have in real life. Very soft edges with the paper texture showing through. So just went around the edges real quick with the pencil. And I realized that I needed to make it look like the other wing was showing through because the, the sun was behind it and you can kind of see the overlap. I almost forgot about that. So I just kind of add a little wash of gray there. So since this is a nature journal, I am just gonna label it with what it is. My monarch butterfly, my fake calligraphy. <laughs> I just use my own handwriting and anywhere there's a downstroke, I go over it again and make it a little thicker. And the Mexican sunflower. They're so pretty, highly recommend, easy to grow. Very tall, but the flower is not that big. And the goldfinches love them too. And I saw a hummingbird at it, at it the other day. I'm gonna add a nice little border here. Sometimes I feel like that just kind of finishes it off and makes it more fun, just gives a little flair. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful to you. Let me know if you have done any nature journaling this summer and if you've grown any beautiful flowers. I would love to know about them so that maybe I'll try them next year. 
thanks a lot for watching this make sure you like and subscribe and share this with anyone who you think would be interested oh and a big shout out to my patrons for making these videos possible i truly appreciate you and thank you so much for all your support if you're interested in supporting me on patreon i have monthly rewards that you are sure to love check out the link below and everybody have a great day love you bye